Hey guys, I miss all your faces, but I just wanted to give you guys a little video today to show you guys what we're doing in class today, or class. Um, so anyway, yesterday you guys should have done this little sorting tool activity. It was lesson 2.1. We're still in matter and energy and ecosystems. Chapter 2, lesson 2.1. Yesterday you guys should have done activity 2. It's this little sorting tool. So if you guys go to the link, it looks like this. It says, show your ideas about which part of an ecosystem give off carbon dioxide. So your focus for this 2.1 lesson is, where does carbon dioxide come from in an ecosystem? So let's just take a second to talk about that. Okay, we know that in an ecosystem, plants obviously go through photosynthesis. Um, just a little vocab review, a plant is a producer because they can make their own food. Okay, they can produce their own food. In this case, the food that they're making is glucose, okay, which we know is an energy storage molecule. So we take energy uh, from the sun and we can use that energy to convert carbon dioxide into glucose so our carbon goes in as carbon dioxide and comes out as glucose okay and then that uh, glucose is an energy storage molecule um, because it stores energy for us but in order to be able to use that energy from an energy storage molecule we have to have a process to break that energy into or that energy storage molecule like glucose into actual energy we can use so that's what you guys are going to be focusing on with this chapter but back to what we're talking about is so plants are producers they use carbon dioxide but where does that carbon dioxide come? So where do they get the carbon dioxide to convert to glucose? So what you guys have is six organisms over here, soil bacteria, which is a decomposer, fallen leaves, which is dead matter, Alodia plant is an aquatic plant, it's a producer, uh, mushroom is a decomposer. Remember, mushrooms are different than plants. Okay, they're two different kingdoms, kingdom fungi uh, versus kingdom plantae because they secrete enzymes into their surroundings and that digest food and then they absorb them. A uh, snail is a primary consumer and then we have a snake is a secondary consumer. Just remember that a consumer is opposite of a producer. A producer can make their own food but a consumer has to get it from somewhere else. So you guys took and you guys sort them, and sorted them into two columns. Either it gives off carbon dioxide or it does not give off carbon dioxide. It's okay if you don't know, okay? We're going to come back to this later and um, you'll have some more information to help you guys kind of sort through this, including today's little lab activity, which is called the snail and the elodia experience, uh, experiment. Okay, so you, this was yesterday's, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. Okay, today you guys will be doing part three. So part three is a little video experiment that you guys will be watching. It has two parts, okay? To get to these videos, you guys will click on lesson brief right up here next to your warm up. And you guys can scroll down on the right hand side. You see right here, video, snail and Elodia experiment part one, snail and Elodia experiment part two. So part one kind of explains the experiment. So you guys will watch that and then you guys will do part three, which is your predictions. Okay, so don't watch part two without um, doing your predictions first. So basically, I'll just give you guys a rundown of what the video shows you is you guys are gonna be testing um, three little vials. Each vial has a chemical called bromothymol blue in it. Uh, you guys can see this BTB is the bromothymol blue. So the bromothymol blue helps us detect whether there's any carbon dioxide in each of the vials. So each vial has water in it and then some of this bromothymol blue. Okay, what we're gonna do is the first vial will have nothing in it, that's what we call our control. The second vial is going to have a producer, which is the elodia in it. We know producers use carbon dioxide and go through photosynthesis. And our last vial, vial C, will be the snail. Okay, so what you guys are gonna do is make predictions so you guys can just write the color in here. Or I guess, it, no, excuse, sorry, it says write yes or no. So your prediction, and then you guys will come back to this and write the results. So watch part one of the video, and then go do your prediction. So what your results would look like is if that organism, so either the one that has nothing in it, your control, the snail or the elodia, if it produces carbon dioxide, if it produces a lot of carbon dioxide, that bromothymol blue will turn to yellow. So the vial will be yellow when we're done with this. If it does a little bit of carbon dioxide, it's going to turn green. And if it produces no carbon dioxide or uses up all the carbon dioxide, that vial will stay blue. So basically the two that you're making predictions on is we know already that the one that has nothing in it, vial A, should be 
no carbon dioxide, right? Because we haven't added anything to it. It's our control. It's what we're using to compare um, the other two vials to. So prediction beforehand. So watch part one and then do your prediction. Will the organisms give off carbon dioxide during the experiment? Yes or no? So just make your prediction. Do you think the snail will give off carbon dioxide? Okay, do you think the plant will give off carbon dioxide? Okay, then you guys can go ahead and watch part two of the experiment. Okay, after part two, come back in and fill out the results. Did the organism give off carbon dioxide during the experiment? Yes or no? You guys will actually be able to see the results and it'll tell you, all right, you know, vial A remained blue because it had nothing in it. The vial with Elodia in it was this color. Okay, and then you guys will be able to look at this key and be like, oh, look, there was a low amount of carbon dioxide or high or none. Okay, and then same with the snail. You guys will be able to see the results of the snail. Okay, so that's the only part you guys will be doing in Amplify today um, is looking at your predictions. Okay, so watch part one of the video, do your predictions, watch part two of the video, and then do your results. Once you guys are done with that, you guys have some discussion questions, so you'll need to go into Edmodo. You guys have three easy little discussion questions for you guys to turn in in Edmodo, okay? So how well did your predictions match the actual results? You guys can look back at Amplify and say, all right, here are my results, here are my predictions. How did you do? Okay, it's okay if your predictions are wrong, you guys. That's why we're doing this. Okay, second question, do producers give off or take in carbon dioxide? So do producers, remember the plant, give off carbon dioxide or take in carbon dioxide? Okay, how do you know? So use your results from the experiment. What did you learn uh, with the bromothymol blue in that experiment? And then do consumers give off or take in carbon dioxide? Answer, how do you know? Okay, so at any rate, that's your guys' assignment for today. Um, the main thing that I'm gonna be grading right here is this Edmodo assignment. Um, these three questions that kind of finalizes your experiment, okay? So if you guys have any questions, remember we'll be doing a chat tomorrow. First period is 9 o'clock, uh, second period is 9.15, and third period is 9.30. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can jump into the correct class period in Teams, and I will be there to answer any questions you have. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I sure am missing you guys, and I hope things are going well for you guys and you're staying healthy and happy. Have a wonderful day.